All right, it's time to head to the bot lane. Easily one of the most interesting and probably unpredictable positions in the LCS. Let's talk some TSM. We are back again to talking TSM, and this time we are going to be going over the bot lane and Neo, one of the, I think, not exactly unexpected additions to our team, but one that might be a little underrated by some people. But I want to know, again, <laughs> where do you rank Neo amongst LCS bot laners? Is he near the top? Is he near the bottom? I want to hear what you guys think before you watch too much of this video, because uh, I know you care so much about my opinion. No, you don't. It's okay. I understand. Um, but regardless, I, I do want to talk about Neo, and he is a player that I have always felt is is a lot stronger than most people give him credit for. And listen, I want to remind everybody that. I love to talk about age, right? I think age is an important part of the, the puzzle for League of Legends specifically and one that we're still figuring out, you know, when do you actually stop being good? And I think that age continues to get higher and higher, you know, with people like Doublelift talking about 80 carries coming back. Neo just turned 23. He is, I believe, the youngest player. I'm 99% I'm sure he is the youngest player on our entire roster both ways, uh, both with the academy team and with the main team. And that makes me happy that he's he's still kind of a, not a developmental player, but he's still somebody who I think has potential. And so when we look at the other nine players, again, in no particular order, we've got apparently at least rumored still, technically, but he's kind of spoiled that himself, double lift for 100 Thieves. We have Luger for CLG, uh, Berserker for Cloud9, Dignitas is brought in, oh gosh, why can I not, they've kept Spawn, which was an interesting decision. Uh, then you have FlyQuest, who are uh, bringing in Prince, apparently, which is absolutely crazy. FBI heads to Evil Geniuses, you got Yon over there with Team Liquid, Tactical going to Immortals, and Stixa rounding us out with Golden Guardians. This, there's really only two AD carries that I don't like at all, kind of maybe three in the LCS heading into next year, um, and I'll let you guys figure out who those people are uh, here shortly, but you know, again, as I've been doing, I'm going to cut these in half for you. In no particular order, I've got Luger, Doublelift, Prince, Berserker, and FBI in my top five. In my bottom five, I've got Tactical, Stixe, Yon, Spawn, excuse me, and Neo. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, I think, pretty clear-cut divisions between, you know, the top five and the bottom five, but I do think that the the nuances and the difference gaps between them are a lot smaller than people might think. I I do believe that there's a grouping of three. I believe Yon, Neo, and Tactical are kind of all in the same group for right now. I do believe that Yon has a little bit more potential than um, Neo or Tactical. And I guess I'm giving this away now, but like I do believe that Neo is a better player than Tactical is currently. I still think that either one of them could be great, and I have my reasonings for it. That obviously puts Stixe and Spawn in the bottom two spots, by the way. So now you'll have to figure out who the top five are when I put out that article. But when looking at Neo, I, I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything because he, you know, he got his start with Optic Academy like five years ago when he really was just a young type, you know, 17, 18, and he had a couple pop-off games. You're like, oh my God, this guy's going to be great, right? Then for some reason, most of at least the early 2020 and late 2019, he didn't really get a chance to do a whole lot. He comes back and in 2021 and in, in late 2020, he was really solid, honestly. And 
like I'm looking at his 2021 stats right now. That's why I'm looking away. So I do apologize. I'm trying to stay close to the mic for you guys. But Neo led the LCS with FBI, Zven, Wild Turtle still in it, right? He led the entire league in KDA and he had the highest kills at 94 in the game while his kill share was extremely high his kill participation was high his cs per minute was a little bit low but he was i mean he was the best ad carry almost unarguably in the lcs in 2021 and when you even see in the summer when danny came in danny was really good tactical had came in and was and had his amazing split but right below them was neo again with 97 kills with 134 assists right you know and and basically going even in lane the 2022 version of neo didn't have afromo he didn't have that guy who was guiding him and 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 giving him the ability to be great but even in the spring this guy was still pretty solid right he still had a similar kda of 3.7 and he actually increased his laning stats by almost double okay to where he was in the positives at nearly every single stat I think that he is a much better player when given resources. And I think that he is able to adapt to styles. Now, I think late game suits him better. But I believe that he can play for lane. I believe he can play for aggression early on in the 2v2 in the bot lane. And I believe that with Chime, he can be a lot better than most people are going to want to admit, honestly. This guy has the potential to easily break his way into the top five. Now, is he going to be better than, you know, I'll just, again, I'm having to give these a little bit more away than I'd like to, than Berserker or Prince? No, I don't think so. I mean, Prince might take a little while to warm up, but, like, those two are just absolute mechanical gods when it comes to this game, and I think they're extremely good. But could Neo potentially fight for that third spot? Absolutely. And I think the people who are putting him you know, below Sticks A and even below Tactical, I think it's criminal. I, I really do. I, I am, I've been a big Neo stand for a while, and he's one of the other players that I'm really excited about for this team because I think if you're going to have a player that has future potential for this team, I think it's Neo, and he's been vastly underrated his entire career, yet he is statistically still one of the better AD carries, and he's a pretty consistent as well he's rarely ever going to lose you games sometimes he disappears a little bit there's no doubt about that but if you're putting resources into him he's definitely not going to completely disappear i think he can carry and i think his positioning is generally pretty solid so i do have right now i have him at seventh okay even though i've been talking him up i do have him in, in the seventh position for right now i do believe that his his height, his potential could be in that three, four, five range. And when the AD carry is a uh, position is as strong as it is. I think he's kind of the gatekeeper. I think we can kind of assess how good Yon's going to be based on him. How good is Luger going to be coming in the next year? How good is double lift or FBI going to be FBI coming off of a more quiet, but still steady, strong year and double lift coming off of not playing for two years, right? Like, Neo almost can easily work his way up into the top four. I, I really do believe that. And he's going to have you know the opportunity to show it with TSM after Dignitas gave up on him to, for Spawn. Like, come on, dude. I know that, that Neo is better than Spawn. And I'm sorry, Spawn, if you're watching this. I, I, you know, I hope that you have a great year. But I do believe that, that Neo is, is the better player. And I think that we're going to see that this year. Um, especially with, again, a support, I think as strong as Chime is and one who's going to, you know, empower Neo, I think not in the same way that Aphromu is, because obviously Aphromu, Aphromu, excuse me, had a much better career and, and longer and had a lot more experience than Chime does. But I, th- I do think that Chime is a, a similar player where he's going to be consistently underrated, but is I think a lot better than most people think. I really do think that TSM's bot lane is going to be a lot better than people think they are. I can't wait to go through the support rankings with you, but please 
look below, you know, look at the videos below. This is the fourth one in this series I'm doing, ranking all the different players from TSM. And I even talked about Shawi and what my expectations are for him. Once we're done with this series, we're going to kind of take a look at where TSM might rank. Uh, maybe a little bit closer to the season, if I'm being honest with you. But we will have that coming out. Don't worry. I know some of you will be waiting for it. But, yeah, with that, I'll catch you guys all on the next one.